and just bless him tonight truly the heavens are open over us and i like you to know that god is set to encounter you beyond your expectation beyond your imagination he's the almighty there is nothing he cannot do can you lift your hands and just bless his name one more once more bless his name what a moment in his presence. What a moment. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name. I want you to pray one prayer. Put your hands down before we sit down. I know that some of us are aware, virtually almost all of us are aware um, of the series that we are beginning tonight. And I pray that this will not just be one good sermon. I pray that this will not just be one good teaching. Without the power of God, whatever we do is subjected to exegesis and lecture. It is the power of God in this gospel that we preach that transforms men, that changes life. Your life will not change because you met a preacher. Your life will change because you encountered the power that is in the gospel. And I want us to pray one prayer. Say after me in the name of Jesus. No, you can say it with power. In the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, I am here tonight and I insist that something something good must happen to my life I insist that in the course of this series let every stronghold of the enemy over my life over my family be broken I insist that I will receive supernatural liberation, freedom, and deliverance by the power that is in the name of Jesus. Can you pray for 60 seconds before we sit down? Come on, I want you to pray. Ila rabara Total deliverance. Let every shackle, every yoke, every enslavement, every burden, every bondage, every orchestration of darkness that may have existed in my life prior to this point, without my knowledge, without my notice, come face to face with the power of God. Come on, somebody needs to pray. There is power in your name. Miracles happen in your name. As we lift our voice in prayer. It's you that we see. There is power in your name. Hey, miracles happen when we call your name. We lift our voice in praise. It's you that we see. 
will be lifted and destroyed I pray in the name of Jesus and I make demands for your fire in this place as I teach Lord I pray that there will be an impartation of fire of power and grace let your fire search into the lives of your people bring out every hiding devil Bring out every hidden bondage. Consumed by the fire of your wrath. In the name of Jesus. I make demands for the ministry of angels in this place. And I ask Lord. That you will do something supernatural. Something tangible. Can you lift your hands and just close your eyes for 30 seconds. Touch the cymbals for me please. Lord, I pray that there will be an unction tonight of your power. I pray and I thank you for your presence in this place. I thank you for your presence. Touch it. I thank you for your presence. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Please be seated. God bless you. Amen. Take the key up by one tone. One summit on rather. Hallelujah. Amen. So good to see every one of us today. Every moment, every meeting in this place is usually an encounter for somebody. And I trust that tonight your lives. And your destinies will be changed transformed to look like what god wants it to be how many of you believe that with me god is in the business of transformation god is in the business of change until we reflect his image until our lives take the very portrait that has been designed 
and written concerning hearts in heaven. And I trust God that through this subject tonight, many of us will come out of bondages, out of yokes. Some of you are here because your families are in need of desperate deliverance. The Bible says he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from all their destructions. Now the Hebrew word used there for destruction is a very cunning word, very long. But it's taken from an original root word, shaka. It means pit. So the destruction there speaks of a pit or anything that you ha has enclosed a person. You may not necessarily carry a demon inside of you, but many of us are not aware that some of the setbacks that we face as a result of the intelligence of the kingdom of darkness put in place. And I've taught us before that Satan masquerades and hides in darkness. Darkness also to mean confusion. Darkness also to mean ignorance. As long as you are not ignorant, or as long as you are ignorant that Satan is responsible for that setback whether it's an affliction an ailment a cycle or a pattern the enemy will hold sway and that's the reason why you must understand that it is part of the salvation package for god's people to experience deliverance somebody said deliverance the word salvation is the greek word soteria it has five meanings redemption deliverance and so many others and i know that this subject is a very controversial subject in the body of christ because it's very deep and very broad and i am aware that in recent times we've had some error as regard this topic here and there but i pray to god that god will give me accuracy to deliver his word today I pray that God will help me to give balance to this truth. Now, what I'm going to teach you tonight is just a fraction. It's just a tip of the iceberg. Deliverance is a subject. It's so broad that you can teach it for one year. That's the reason why you have to be called or anointed in that ministry. Not everybody in the fivefold has an anointing for deliverance. We, we need to be able to differentiate between ministries and anointings. A ministry is an office that God places you in to function in respect to equipping and edifying the body of Christ. But an anointing is a special legitimization, a special authorization from heaven. And that authorization comes with the ability and the backing spiritually for you to tread in a particular field. So when it comes to deliverance, you have to be anointed or gifted by God to move in that place. Are we together? So the fact that somebody has some manifestations in his life doesn't mean that they are called into that place. That's the reason why the Bible says, by a prophet, God led them out. And by a prophet, they were preserved. God will always send a voice into your life at momentary seasons when he wants to handle these issues. And I, I beg you, I want you to come with an expectation. Some of you, I need you to have expectations tonight because you are sitting right here. But in the next one hour, certain things are about to happen in your life. And you will leave this place knowing that the siege has been broken. In the name of Jesus. So it's a lot. I want to see how I can compress it today. And then we'll just pray. Amen. All right. Generational curses versus generational mindsets. That's my choice of the topic. say this by God's grace and with all humility that what I'm about to share with us I've been on this subject I've been studying this for two years I started studying this in 2019 and God will not allow me to teach it 
I felt I'd known so much. But even till this morning when I was studying, I just realized that my knowledge was little. So I just pray that God will move beyond my limitation of knowledge and his power will reach into your life. You know, you never know the devil is hiding until light comes. There's something about the fire of God, it reveals and it consumes. Paul never knew that there was a viper in the log of wood until it was thrown into the fire. You never know that there are demon spirits, manipulations of hell hiding in your family or in your life or in your ancestry until you get exposed to heavy weight concentration of the anointing. It is the anointing that looks for it. The Bible says the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. When the anointing comes into your life, it looks for anything that represents bondage or yoke. Stagnation, setback, limitation, poverty, whatever it is. It looks for it. That's the reason why the first cause of the anointing, as far as the gospel is concerned, is to preach the good news to the poor. That means poverty is also a yoke. That God wants to be dealt with in his people. Say amen. So I pray that God will help me. Amen. You pray that with me. Amen. Can you just sit in your, in your sitting position? Pray for just 15 seconds. Pray. And generate an expectation for what you really will have God do for you today. Oh, Braha Sudama. Mambraskila Habaratos. Light is shining in the darkness. Jesus, you are Lord. Light is shining in the darkness. Jesus, you are Lord. Jesus, you are Lord. You have risen from the dead. You are Lord, light is shining in the darkness, Jesus, you are Lord. Hallelujah. So some of the frequently asked questions that I intend to this teaching to deal with today as follows some of the frequently asked questions around this subject of generational curses mindset strongholds and all of that as follows number one what are generational curses it's one of the questions that many people will ask a lot of people don't understand this term generational curses a lot of people are oblivious of what a curse really is number two can a curse affect or establish a pattern of reasoning in a family is it possible that a curse can affect or establish a pattern in other words the way it affects a family or affects a people is by establishing a pattern of reasoning in the family number three what is a mindset number four how are curses incurred and sustained in a family or amongst a people how are curses incurred and sustained in a family or amongst the people number five how can i know if i'm under a curse what are the patterns to be observed? What are the templates? 
basic intelligences to know when a curse is at play number f number six can a generational curse be broken the answer to that last question is capital y e s somebody say yes yeah and many other questions that have been asked around this now like i said deliverance is very fundamental actually i was reading a book recently and they said something there that struck my heart um if you permit me i'll just be patient today i want to teach is that okay let me just teach now that when we begin to pray we can now switch okay but i need a lot of patience to be able to teach us i was reading a book recently on you know this subject and the writer said something that struck my heart i had i had to ask god for forgiveness the writer said that what will a minister stand before god and tell god as his excuse for not teaching the people certain fundamental truths in the scripture amen now i know we are all called to preach or teach different things nobody is called to preach the whole bible but every believer should be exposed to fundamental truths and doctrines from the word of god from the scriptures that will make for their growth and their transformation and one of the privilege of the apostolic anointing is that we have the mercy of god to be able to touch almost everything because it's a foundational anointing it is meant to establish people amen so i want to take advantage of that because a lot of people need to be delivered from a lot of things demons are just one of them the kingdom of darkness is so, so intelligent in their manipulations that you cannot say they have one method of enslaving people god delivered the children of israel out of egypt 430 years of slavery it took him just one night to bring him out but that was not all the deliverance that there was the next stage of the deliverance took him 40 years and the writer of hebrews said that if you hear his voice today do not harden your heart ask your fathers in other words if you do certain things now the same reproach that was on your fathers because you know that they spent 40 years and god killed that generation so they didn't experience complete deliverance because deliverance entails your maximum cooperation with the leading of the spirit and the authority of scripture in my little years of experience in ministry i've had to undergo you know deliverances with people in the deliverance ministry i discovered that sometimes if the people are not ready to be delivered they will never get deliverance it doesn't matter if you are as anointed to the point whereby the oil is dropping from your head to the ground even if a jug appears from heaven with oil and it's poured on your head if people don't want to be delivered they will not be delivered because if satan is in the lives of people it is because there are certain things that permitted his entrance and that's the reason why we are handling this subject and i like that your heart will be open i just trust i trust god to help us today give us an opening in jesus name all right let's begin psalms 33 verse 11 and 12. psalms 33 verse 11 and 12. i see miracles signs and wonders in the glory and the power i see miracles signs and wonders lord we receive Lord, we partake. We are intentional tonight, Lord. Lord, we receive everlasting freedom. Lord, we partake. 
Psalms 33 verse 11 The counsel of the Lord stands forever And the plans of his heart to all generations Generations means Okay, the King James says in Aha uh -huh. The thoughts of his heart to all generations That means God's plan God's purpose Is consistent from one generation to another Are we together? God is a transgenerational God Jeremiah 29 verse 11 says I know the thought I have for you Isn't it? Thoughts of peace and not of evil To give you what? A future Some translation says an expected end A future And you can't separate future From something that will outlive your generation To the next generation Are we together? So from these two scriptures We understand that God is transgenerational In his dealings what God starts with one generation Please pay attention this night Pay extreme attention What God starts with one generation He intends to continue With another generation I know that the Bible says that he does a new thing His methods may change But his purpose remains the same And so every generation Is meant to experience Another phase Of his dealings Of his purpose Of his plans if you are with me, say amen. Now, because God is transgenerational, of course, you know, God has a nature. God's nature is that he is eternal and infinite. The Bible tells us in Revelation that he is Alpha and Omega. Actually, it was not written like that in the original text. In the original text, it is written Alpha, Omega. There is no Alpha and Omega because it means beginning and end. But in the original text, it is Alpha Omega, meaning beginning, end. The only explanation to that phrase is something that is a perpetual continuum. Something that continually exists. So before God, there is no tomorrow, there is no yesterday. There is only one date on his calendar. It's called today. God remains the same to every generation. And because God is transgenerational, it is dealings. We must be able to understand what he has done with a previous generation or understand his covenant with the generations of our ancestors to know what he intends to do with us now. Now, the disadvantage of that is that Satan, being not an original, borrowed everything he's using now. Every method the enemy is using now was borrowed from God's system. So Satan has understood that God is transgenerational. What God starts with the fathers, he intends to continue with the children. And Satan borrowed that system to implicate his onslaughts on human beings. And that's where we get what we call generational curses or generational mindset. Are we together? Good. So... But before we go on, let me define what a, te what a curse is. Let's just explain some, you know, get down some definition of terms. I'd like to explain or define what a curse is to you. And then what mindsets are. Then I will move into the origin of curses. Is that okay? Are we getting blessed? A curse, number one. Let me give you a few definitions. Number one, definition of a curse. It means to utter a wish of evil. To utter a wish of evil against someone or something. To utter a wish of evil against someone or something. So a curse is actually verbalized, isn't it? Number two, to call for mischief or evil to fall upon. To call for mischief or evil to fall upon. So when by an act of utterance, evil is invoked upon a person. And you know this is actually the opposite of blessings, isn't it? Number three, 
to bring evil upon to bring evil upon you see the words are still repeated to bring evil upon that's a curse to bring evil upon number four to blast <laughs> to blast blast is b l a s t to blast vex harass with great calamities sorry let me take it again to blast vex harass or torment with great calamities did we get that can we read it together at the count of three one two three read to blast to vex to harass torment now take note of the three words vex harass torment every time you read the bible especially if you read your king james translation these words were used side by side with the operation of demons in the lives of people did you hear what i said to vex there was a woman who took her daughter to jesus and complained that the daughter was vexed to harass or to torment that means that the fundamentals of a curse within its foundation is an element of demonic oppression are we hearing me that's why at the beginning of the year i told you that your words carry a lot of power the bible says death and life lies in the power of the tongue when you speak blessing you speak life when you speak a curse you're speaking death and it so happens that the realm of the spirit complies to utterance as a matter of fact the realm of the spirit is command compliant and those of you who are on break breakfast prayer initiative whatsapp group you've been following the, the weekly posts every every week and on one of those weeks i told us that the realm of the spirit is command compliant in other words all it takes for a spirit to get into a family or an individual's life is a word spoken somebody say a word spoken so a curse means to blast to vex or harass or torment in other words utterances that are meant to invoke the oppressions of demons to bring about a torment or a harassment with several kinds of calamities because you know the devil's signature by the amount of wickedness and evil existing in the life of an individual are we together the way we are looking at me it's like i should close the bible let's let's go to another teaching let's teach on the prophetic glory Abby, some of you don't like this teaching, ba? <laughs> mindset. Let's define mindset. Number one, it means a way of thinking. It means a way of thinking. A way of thinking. Number two, it also means any attitude or op opinion especially one that's habitual any attitude or opinion especially one that is habitual so it's not just a way of thinking alone but it's also an attitude that is developed an opinion in the mind of an individual that becomes a habit in other words the way somebody reasons the way a person thinks that means that people are controlled by their mindset are you hearing me if you are hearing me say amen, amen. and you know what was happening in 21st century is what i call modern kind of slavery in the past decades ago centuries ago the slavery we had especially on the black continent africa was you know slave masters coming here conquering us visibly and taking some of our people for slave or for slavery you know and many of us think that the issue of slavery has come to an end it hasn't come to an end yet there is what i call modern system of slavery the 21st century world understands that men are controlled by how they think and the building block of 
the thought of an individual is the information that he or she receives so if you can customize a particular pattern of information to an individual and get them to receive that information and think that way you can actually enslave them to a cause or a purpose is that true that's the reason why they develop cartoons hallelujah that's the reason why they develop uh, what do you call it soap opera that's the reason why they develop series that a demonic system of enslaving a man making him waste his time which is the unit of his life is to just let him buy a series film series season one what is that what you call it and then he spends the whole week watching season one season two season three is after every season ends with the suspense he goes to buy the next one money he should give for offering he's giving it for then when he comes to church on sunday all he has is 20 naira to give god but he bought how much they sell dvds now sir because i don't know when last i bought those things how much they sell now a, a dvd now is one thousand goodness so imagine the person buys something that has five seasons that's how much five thousand then he comes to church on sunday and says he doesn't have offering and his salary is fifteen thousand per month not per week so what he did was he spent a portion of his life investing it on a system that somebody created to enslave him amen now i know what you're thinking somebody that's saying uh, apostle doesn't mean we should not watch those things i don't know you decide for yourself the bible says blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the ways of sinners nor sit in the seat of scornful but his delight is in what the law so you watch those things me oh my delight is in the law of the lord and in it do i meditate there. if i'm on the internet i'm only looking for a material that will add to my knowledge or bless me if only we can create a system that can narrow the thinking pattern of an individual a system that has patterns sequences to control how a person thinks is called mindset that's 21st century slavery and a lot of Christians are caught up in that. Now, what you realize about those things is that if you get involved with them, you get to a point where you become addicted. It looks like you can't stay a day without watching them. You are a slave at that point. And somewhere behind that is a demonic entity. Because you need to understand the kingdom of darkness and how it operates. The Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and what? Powers. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in heavenly. The reason why they were departmentalized is because they are categorized based on their functions. Rulers of the darkness of this world, another translation puts it this way. The rulers of this present darkness. Darkness is the system that controls this world today. Darkness means ignorance, confusion, alienation from the life of God. So there are spiritual demonic entities that are called rulers of the darkness. This is how they rule. They create a system, get human beings that will pioneer this system and enslave people. And you know, for example, that's what you see with Michael Jackson. When we were born, those days when we were small, everybody wants to dance and watch Michael Jackson, um, you know, music. Isn't it? Mm. Everybody wants to moonwalk. Isn't it? Some of you are looking at me. You did it even till now. You are still doing it. And you notice something about his concert. As soon as he appears, people begin to scream and faint. That was the system somewhere behind that were manipulations from the kingdom of darkness to capture a generation i have no problem with him the problem i have is that where did his music lead p men to so i put it as a question to you what you watch 
or what you are allowing to control you where is it leading you to is it leading you to godliness and contentment or is it corrupting you the more and you know we are living in a very visual age everything is all about light and vision so what satan wants to do is to corrupt the vision of children of god make you watch all kinds of rubbish distort the aspect of your mind that controls vision so it becomes difficult for you to have a good dream part time i don't have time to explain that to you i'm just talking about mindset somebody say mindset So let's look at the origin of crosses. Amen. Genesis chapter 3 verse 14 through 19. Let's look at the first place curses were mentioned. Put it on the screen for me. Just and give us a new King James please. So the Lord God said to the serpent. Now of course we know what happened here. Eve and Adam had eaten of the tree that God asked them not to. They had disobeyed. And when they came, Adam gave the blame to Eve. Eve gave the blame to the serpent. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, of course, obviously the serpent didn't, couldn't give anybody the blame because he was the one to be blamed. Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all cattle and more than every beast of the field. On your belly you shall go and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. Next verse. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your seed and her seed. He, in capital letter, shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. The curses are still going on. Then to Adam he said, you will notice that the Bible didn't say then to man. Especially if you read King James or New King James. The Bible says then to Adam. The reason why God didn't use man here but Adam was because in Genesis chapter 1, God created man. That man was a spirit man. That was the man God gave dominion to. Just to show you how all-knowing God is. Genesis chapter 2. God formed man. And he called that man Adam in other words the curse that God was releasing now was to affect the man that was formed in the flesh and every seed that will be produced in that kind because when God created everything God created he created to have a seed after their kind if God had said to the man in capital letters it means that redemption wouldn't have been possible because it would have been from the realm of the spirit. It would have affected the spirit man. That's why the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Because that is the man after the God kind. Did you hear what I said? Where are we? Because you have heeded the voice of your wife. And have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you. It doesn't mean you shouldn't listen to your wife. Oh. Amen. It doesn't mean you should not. After all, Apostle read it in church. Say you, you listen to the voice of your wife. No, please. Listen to her. Especially when the advice is spiritual. But if it's carnal, don't listen. And you can only know it's carnal when you are a spiritual person. If you are carnal and you are saying she's carnal, that means because you are carnal too. Amen. No amen, I understand. It's all right. And have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground. And I've told you that God would have cursed him, but God knew that he was created in his image. So God looked in annoyance on the ground and vent his anger on the ground. Because if he had cursed the man in his image, he would have been cursing himself. Oh, you need to understand the intelligence of scripture when you when you understand these things you now know that even before god created the earth redemption was his plan he didn't do everything by mistake here 
Cost is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Go on. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth from you, for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field. Verse 19. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you shall return. Now this was the first scenario in scripture where curses were mentioned. So let's deduce from this passage another passage in scripture and understand or get to know the sources or the roots of curses. Number one thing we deduce here is disobedience. Remember I'm talking about the origin of curses now, isn't it? Good. So the first thing we deduce from this passage was disobedience. They did what God didn't what God said they shouldn't do and then curses came that means disobedience can be an origin or a root cause of a curse in other words rebellion as well you know disobedience is rebellion right isn't it scriptural standard you are you, you'll be judged side by side with a witch and you know that's 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 the character of witchcraft rebellion to authorities deliberate disobedience you don't want to be led you don't want to come under authority and when i talk about witchcraft many of you you are look, you are thinking about your village people who carry all kinds of things i tell you rebellion and witchcraft is the same thing so if you are a rebel or you're always giving the leadership above you problem you are you are under the same category a man of god said that maybe when we get to heaven some people god will say witches stand this way and some people will stand here and some other people will not go god will say no you you were a rebel join them rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft <laughs> that's why the bible advises us to be submissive to authority amen so disobedience number one is an origin a root cause Give me Deuteronomy 28. Let's see something there before we go on to the next, um, the next point. Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, verse 2, and then verse 15. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Go on, verse 2. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Why? Because of obedience, isn't it? verse 15 but it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes which I command you today that all this word curses so disobedience number one number two ignorance Ignorance too can be an origin or a source of a curse. Somebody say, Apostle, how come? If I didn't know it, why should I suffer for it? The Bible says in Joshua, when the children of Israel had plundered Jericho and totally destroyed it, Joshua made an utterance. I don't know the scripture. I don't if media can find that scripture for me, or if you can't, no problem. Joshua made an utterance. Joshua said, Cursed be anybody who will build the walls of Jericho. That he will lay the foundation with his first son and he will finish it with his last son. Do you know the meaning of that? What it means is that he will do it ki killing all his children. Let me explain it very well. It means that anybody that will try to build Jericho, all his children will die as the sacrifice for the build up. That looks like something happening in our days. There are parts of Nigeria, I don't want to mention the places, because some of you are from those states, where I was passing one day, and you know, I was, we were passing that place, and somebody, I was asking them, why do you have a lot of uncompleted houses or buildings here? Mighty edifices, but they are uncompleted. 
and the person told me because he was a native of that place the person told me or close to that place he said that you know what they do the kind of witchcraft they practice there is that if you are building a house if you do ritual money and you are building a house you don't finish that house if you finish it you die so they build but they ensure that they don't finish it completely there must be one part that is uncompleted there are other places in this nation where and in africa where the moment you start a project like building a house somebody dies every time it advances somebody dies by the time you finish building there is nobody left again to move into the house with you or maybe you too you now be next am i am i making sense is that true that's why we have to deal with it because some of you are here and have seen these things happen to your uncles happen to your relatives you are even afraid now of building a house or doing any project i know people who don't want to go to their village you know you mention anything about village they don't want to go there so in first Kings 16 verse 34 okay this was the, the scripture joshua placed a curse on any man who will rise to build that city give us first king 16 34 years later about a thousand years later about 500 years later or so in his days in the days of ahab hiel of bethel built jericho he laid his foundation with abiram his firstborn meaning when he started building it his firstborn died and as he continued building his children were dying one one after the other and with his youngest son segu he set up his gates in those days you know that you are finished building a city by lastly mounting the gates of that city so this guy because of the level of idolatry in the land people were no longer conscious of god and so they had forgotten all that happened in the past in the midst of that ignorance this guy came up to build a city that had been cursed and in his ignorance the curse affected his children the children at least it should have affected him that's the reason why the bible says that god is the one who visited iniquity of the fathers to the third and fourth generation this means that your actions have very high implications and so from this point we see that ignorance is also one of the origins of a curse so the fact that you don't know it doesn't mean you will not suffer it are we here you watch the playlet isn't it i gave my life to christ i'm a new creature in christ jesus you see we have argued all those things and i don't even have time to talk about it that scripture is actually a description of your spiritual state if any man be in christ he's a new creature that's why you need to take cognizance of the word man as used in scripture man as used in scripture otherwise the psalmist will not say what is man he said you will not say who is man he said what is man if he had said who is man he would have been trying to define a particular human male personality but he didn't say who is man he said what is man speaking of purpose in other words the man that god created the spiritual man now when you come in christ your spirit assumes every portrait that that man has so if any man be in christ is a new creature all things have passed away all things have become new that affects your spirit quite all right but you are still in flesh and you are still on the earth and that's another template of existence so ignorance too can be a cause number three anguish and sorrow anguish and sorrow can become the origin of a curse anguish and sorrow pain the bible says in first chronicles chapter 4 verse 9 jabez was more honorable than his brethren he had a great destiny great future great prophecy about his life he was even from the tribe of judah the tribe of kings but there was nothing kingly about his life why because the bible says in the next line of that verse that his mother called him jabez because she bore him in pain and in sorrow and there are people in their pain and sorrows 
have made utterances that became a curse so what you find many people suffering what could actually be as a result of the sorrow or the pain of an ancestor are we here genesis 35 verse 18 there's another story there and the story is about rachel when rachel was pregnant and about to deliver benjamin the bible says as she was giving up the ghost she called his name benoni because she bore him in sorrow but jacob being a very smart guy having spiritual intelligence changed his name to benjamin the word benoni means son of my sorrow in other words this child is a product of my sorrow that that has that has affected the entire life of that child and being that that child was a male carrying seed in himself that name was going to affect his generations yet unborn but jacob quickly changed his name to what benjamin meaning son of my right hand in other words son of my favor because when the bible speaks of right hand it also literally or if you figuratively means favor are we together so anguish and sorrow could be an origin number four anger and grief anger and grief jacob was angry with some of his sons and he carried that anger and malice for a long time and when he was about to die he laid crosses on them reuben for instance he told reuben you are my firstborn the excellency of my strength but you will be as unstable as water why because he slept with his father's wife now when you read many chapters before the bible says when reuben did it jacob was aware but jacob didn't say anything but he kept the anger that's why the bible says be angry and sin not let not the sun go down in your anger because anything you say in that anger a cause can be produced and you have to know the way god designed this universe you can't retrieve what you have said is that true in anger jacob also caused simeon and levi one time their sister was raped by the prince of a town and the prince told his father he wants to marry her and so the brothers got offended told them okay you must circumcise yourselves on the third day while all the men in the city were circumcised and they were trying to heal from their pain simeon and levi took their knives entered that city killed everybody and jacob told them in genesis 49 say cursed be your anger i will show you the implications later so anger and grief can produce a curse could there be a great grandfather out of his anger placed or made an utterance on one of his child and that child happens to be your great grandmother and now you are in christ but you did, were not careful to study history and find out if there is anything in that ancestry amen there are many other portions where anger and grief produce the cause paul was angry with the sorcerer and he cursed him and the sorcerer was blind <laughs> amen mark chapter 11 the bible says jesus was hungry got to a tree the tree didn't have fruit and he cursed the tree in his anger <laughs> and the next day the tree what <laughs> dried up number five another origin of a curse idolatry idolatry and this happens to be perhaps the most powerful source from which a curse can be extended idolatry god told the children of israel in exodus chapter 20 that you will have no other god beside me god condemned idolatry and placed a curse on anyone who will be involved in idolatry now where we read in first kings chapter 16 the bible says in his days speaking of the days of ahab now you know that ahab was a king that brought idolatry into israel he married a woman from another idolatrous nation and brought israel into idolatry they began to serve other gods and so the idolatry was so much in israel that men were turned away from god and his dealings with their fathers and that was the reason why that man in his idolatrous ignorance built jericho and he received a blow for it so how many how many 
And you know, points did I give us on that origins of curses? Five. Now, another thing we must know about curses is that curses happen in time. A curse is a product of what happens or a product of time. A product of time. All right. Implications of a curse. Implications of a curse. When a curse is in motion, what happens? Number one, it shapes the existence of a people. It shapes the existence of a people. Where we read in Genesis chapter 3, God told Adam, He said, The ground is cursed for your sake. And you will toil with the sweat of your brow. Isn't it? But it will only produce thistles and thorns. If you are with me, say amen. amen. Are we together? Now, do you know that that is how a typical human being exists? Give us that scripture again. Genesis chapter 3. I want to show us something. Give us that scripture where God was, you know, I think the last verse, verse 19 or so. Or 18, 18. Genesis chapter 3, verse 18. I want to show you something. Then I'll show you something somewhere else. It says, both thorns and thistles. Go back to the last verse, 17. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. In other words, you will suffer before you eat. Next verse, 18. Both, both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth. Thorns and thistles simply means chuku chuku. In other words, the more you sweat and the more you are hardworking, the little it will produce for you. That is where we get the word hustle. H-U-S-T-L-E. Now you've not understood that the word hustle is a six letter word. Because on the sixth day God made man. In other words, is a curse for the race of mankind. So it is natural for a human being to toil walk like elephants and eat like grass it didn't start today it was something that was pronounced many 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 eons ago are we hearing me i said number one it shapes the existence of a people and today you have christians who are very proud to say i'm, I'm a hustler i just the hustle and i just do one or two things and every time you make that statement you are agreeing with the curse that came upon adam and his kind so you may be a new creature in Christ Jesus, but by your confession, you have identified with a curse that belonged to the first Adam. And that's why you walk nine to five and they pay you 50,000 at the end of the month. In a country where the Naira is being devalued, in fact, the econo economists have projected recently that in the last four years, this is the worst season of inflation. The Naira has never been this devalued. 50,000 is no longer like anything. You can spend it at a go. Somebody say a curse. Genesis 9.25. Let's see something. That, oh my God. Time. Genesis 9.25. Let's see something there. Noah planted a vineyard. Got drunk by the wine. Laid down naked. His second son saw him naked. And went back to tell others about his nakedness. And when Noah got up, Noah started to place a curse. The second son of Noah was called Ham. But let's read this verse. Then he said, Cursed be who? Canaan. Where is Ham there? Ham was the father of Canaan, isn't it? Who committed the offense? It was Ham. Who received the curse? Who received the curse? Is it possible for me to suffer for something I didn't do? Yes. And what did he say about Canaan? A servant of who? Servant. And if you trace very well, Ham is the ancestor of the continent of Africa. Small wonder why the black race happens to be the enslaved race among all the races. Somebody say curse. 
a servant of servants so he shaped the existence of this genie of this of this tribe of this personality that for all they know they will be servants of servants that was why god had to make israel conquer them the land of canaan and then take their possession you know what god told moses he said or told abraham he told him he said while your descendants will be in captivity they will be there until the sin of these people are full not only was their sin full for god to discharge them but god allowed them to walk and create an economy only for them to surrender it to the children of israel so if you find a situation where somebody walks and gathers it for another person is actually because a curse is in motion the bible says in ecclesiastes chapter 2 that the man that god loves he gives wisdom and joy and knowledge but the, to the sinner he gives the toil of gathering and collecting that he will give it to him that god loves that's why if you live in sin you're already under a curse so let's go on implications of a curse number two it usually extends from one generation to another it usually extends from one generation to another sustaining its effect and patterns down the bloodline sustaining its effects and patterns down the bloodline by the individuals and correspond you know by the individuals corresponding action now this is what it means every curse has an effect in the life of an individual the things that happen in the life of a man to make you know he or she is cursed those are the effects and then there are patterns that will outplay now what a curse does is that it extends these effects and these patterns to the next generation based on the individual's corresponding action in other words if my father was living under a curse whether i know i'm aware of it or not if my actions now are the same as his actions if my mindset now is the same as his mindset i have brought myself under the effect and the pattern of that curse somebody says it's not possible as a christian why would the bible say this is a mystery i've seen under the heaven an evil he calls it an evil that the son the sons are trekking but the servants are riding on horses In Genesis 49, God crossed Levi and Simeon. He said, Cursed shall be their anger. 400 years later, Exodus chapter 2, a man from the tribe of Levi took a daughter of the house of Levi and they gave birth to a son. And they saw he was a goodly child. And they kept him for three months, took him, you know the story, went to River Nile. Pharaoh's daughter named him Moses. Isn't it? Where was the cause 400 years ago? Numbers chapter 20, Moses, anger issue again happened with him. And God told him, because you didn't honor me before these people, you will not see the promised land. Now don't just read your Bible black and white. Underneath that, because I believe God would have been merciful enough. But underneath that, the cause was that you repeated a pattern. And so as anointed as Moses was, what happened more than 430 years ago affected him. Now, if you read Psalms 108, verse 32 and 33, the Bible tells us there that it was because of his anger that he became ill for him. So if you read Numbers, you will think it was just because God said, you, will not, you didn't honor me. But when you read the writer of Psalms 108 said that it became ill for him because they grieved him. That's anger, isn't it? So it usually extends from one generation to the next. Number three, it activates adversity and the oppression of demon spirits. A curse activates adversity and the oppression of demon spirits. 
He cast open the door for demons to operate. There was a woman who met Jesus. The Bible called her a Syrophoenician woman. She was from she was a Canaanite woman. What was her complaint to Jesus? That my daughter was vexed by a devil. Isn't it? The Bible called her a Canaanite woman. That was in the book of Matthew. Was it not in Genesis chapter 9 that Noah said, Cursed be Canaan. And thousands of years later, a spirit, because of the curse, traveled through the bloodline. One of Jacob's sons was called God. Jacob said to him, he said, of God concerning God a troop shall overcome him but he shall be over he shall overcome at last the word troop there is the word legion many many years later Jesus came crossed the sea and went to a region that was called God Arins and he met a man that was what possessed when he asked the demons who are you what did they say our name is what legion the same word troop are you following me it looks like i'm talking to myself this night am i opening our understanding this is how deliver this is how you know you can be delivered it starts from an exposition is knowledge first before power a troop shall overcome thousands of years later let me even say another one that will shock you there was actually a curse that was working in the family or in the life of Jacob I told you that a curse activates adversity isn't it good now you know the life of Jacob he struggled all through till he met the angel let me tell you something about Jacob Jacob means deceiver he was a trickster he tricked his brother collected the bread right tricked his brother again collected the blessing isn't it in fact, the way he was able to get Laban's wealth was through a trick that, he, that was devised. I don't have time to show you that from Genesis 31. And many people want to say Jacob was a deceitful person, was a trick. But many of us think it started with Jacob. Hold on. Where did he get that spirit from? He got it from his uncle, Laban. Laban was a trick. Laban instead of giving him Rachel gave him Leah 10 times Laban changed his wages you know why because deceit was in their bloodline hold on Jacob's mother Rebecca was also a trick she was the one who connived with Jacob and where Jacob said what if a curse comes on me she said let the curse be on me do as I say that's from his mother's side his father's side Isaac was a trick too. Isaac lied to Abimelech and said, Sarah, uh, Rebecca is my wife. One day Abimelech looked through the window and saw him playing with his wife. Where did Isaac got it from? Abraham. Abraham lied to Abimelech, same king. Somebody say bloodline. <laughs> there will be deliverance today. Ma pros kataba brada halagadi. You know, there was also another curse that was on Jake, um, you know, this family. Abraham married Sarah. The Bible called her, described that she was fair to look upon. Isaac married Rebekah. The Bible described that she was fair to look upon. Why do you think Jacob wanted Rachel? Because the Bible says she was fair. So, you see, sometimes some kind of lust some kind of lust can travel through a bloodline that's why i said it it activates adversity and the oppression of demons what the demon would do is to empower that cause because it takes a spirit being it takes a spirit agency or a spirit entity to make something travel transgenerationally so your grandmother was raped when she was 15 years by slave traders but you were not there you didn't know your mother was raped when she was also a teenager 
Now you are 19. You have been sexually abused two times. Number four. Implications of a curse. It influences the mindset of a people by establishing habitual thought patterns. It influences the mindset. It grows to become a mind control system. And it establishes habitual thought patterns. Now you may not believe me, but if you understand it, the basics of genetics, in genetics, there's something we call chromosomes. And that's where everybody is formed from. Isn't it? And then, you know, the man and the woman must have 23 pairs of chromosomes. Isn't it? Brought together. In that chromosome is what you have. You, you call the gene. You have gene. You have the DNA and all of that. And the genetic information that the chromosomes from the man and the woman carry together is what outplays in the gametes that are formed which later produces an offspring so the same information that's the reason why if biologically we can prove that you share the same genetic information with your father and your mother why would it be difficult for you to prove that spiritually a curse can travel through the bloodline if you share genetic information with your parents then you can share mindsets so there is a way my father behaved and because I have the same genetic information from him Pastor K is welcome please can we bring him to the front please please can we just honor God for Pastor K you're welcome sir welcome sir give, it, give, him, give him my seat please give him my seat amen alright so if you share the same genetic information with your parents listen up look at me and those genetic materials affect everything about that individual then it is possible that there is or there can be a habitual thought pattern established so if you are not careful even if you were separated from your father by default because you share his genetic information you may find yourself behaving like him let me give you an example now ancestors before civilization came were used to staying in their villages and all they knew about the world was their villages isn't it so by the time civilization started to come and their children started going out they became afraid because the joy of parents then was that their children will grow up and take care of them is that not so that's why in some cultures you find that you know when you get married as the first born boy somehow they'll give you a portion of land in your family compound and you build a house there and they say it's our family compound that's why you share a family curse too amen so when they are, when their children started going out because of civilization to explore the world get government app appointments some of them were not happy and because they were sold out to idolatry they went to the deities that they worshipped and made covenants with them that if you give us wealth and protection and don't allow our, children's to, our children to travel far wherever they travel to make sure they come back so that they can bury us in our old age unknown to them when they made that covenant a spirit was sent through the bloodline that's the reason why the guy who worked with the government for 35 years and 35 years is not enough for him to buy land in that city and build a house he takes his money go to the village and do what builds a house there so when he retires he has nothing in the city he labored for and god said if you are willing and obedient you will eat the fruit of where the land and he goes back to the village retires there and waits for death to come that's all now you are the third generation and if care is not taking that mindset is already working in you and i have no problem with building houses in village i'm bringing that example because i want to talk about pattern i said it established habitual thought pattern so the enemy this is where curses and mindset breach 
that when a curse is on a bloodline or a family using biological connection of sharing genetic information the enemy will ensure he creates a system of thinking that will travel through generations in that family so that as long as they think the same way because as a man thinketh, so he as long as they think the same way they will they will make the same corresponding actions as their parents and as a result the class will legitimately rest upon them and that's what you see happening with women god said to the woman he said in pain you will conceive you in child in pain you will bring forth child and yet your desire will be on your husband you know i read that place in another translation this morning and it was so funny if you read message translation if you read a, a, a new living translation this is how he describes it what it means is that in sorrow the woman will conceive and give birth but regardless of that pain rather than she say enough months later or maybe years later the bible says your desire shall be on your husband she will still be the one looking for the husband for another child why so curses can influence the mindset of a people when it begins to travel as a mindset down the generations it becomes what i call a stronghold the Bible said in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 that the weapons of our warfare are not strongholds. Now just before you think the strongholds are talking about places where demons are. The stronghold first of all literally from that passage the Bible says casting down imaginations. Imaginations exist where? Your mind. So a stronghold is a mind control system that was carefully galvanized maybe as the product of a curse to enslave a particular people generation after generation the bible says in ephesians chapter 4 that because they were ignorant of god they were alienated from the life of god that's the reason why some people it looks as though it's difficult for them to repent why it could be that what is sponsoring the addictions they are suffering from or the sin that they are held by you know bible speaks about sin that doth easily beset could be a stronghold a stronghold is a mind system so everybody in a family one generation or the other operates and thinks in one pattern and these things are possible because spirits doors were open for spirit through curses and if nobody rises up in that family and enforces the benefits of salvation and redemption you may have three generations who are born again but they will still suffer from the same curse because the bible says that we are meant to be kings and priests we understand the dimension of kings but we have not really understood the dimension of priests that a priest actually is one who raises an altar enacts a covenant with a deity and insists that everybody within that family or in that generation will be devoted and a slave to that deity so what the bible is saying is that now that you are in christ you must exercise your priesthood in christ because the bible says that we have a priesthood that is after the order of melchizedek in the old testament there was a priesthood after aaron and if you sin you go in for it but in the new testament there was a priesthood and god carefully made sure that this priesthood was more advanced and older than the old testament's priesthood so that we can enforce or implement that's the reason why the bible says i want to close here well I, I'm, I'm not closing the teaching but i have to just close because of time that's why the bible says if any if, if there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in christ jesus don't stop there that's not the end of the verse who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit and i told you that the reason why god said to adam and released curses was because adam was the man that was formed from the ground not the man that was created in the spirit in genesis 1 so we have two realms here the flesh and the spirit the cross exists where the flesh the bible says 
There is therefore no condemnation, no curse approved to walk to those who are in Christ Jesus who pattern their lives not after the flesh. Because if you are in Christ and you are still living and acting and thinking in the flesh, you are under the curse of the old man. But there has to be a system by which we translate from the flesh into the spirit. So don't follow people to quote those scriptures and say, ah, there is therefore now no condemnation and free indeed. And I, I thank God for the grace message. But you see, let me tell you something. Don't stretch a truth beyond its context. The Bible speaks of doctrine. The message of grace is a powerful message, but it was just one of the fundamental doctrines. Otherwise, God, Paul would have ended in Ephesians chapter 3. But in Ephesians chapter 4, he say, now that you are in Christ, walk walk meaning that if you don't participate there is every tendency that everything you know about your new creation realities will only remain a story in your life and just because your name is christian and your son name is what bishop <laughs> are we ready to pray there are some of us here from families where we have not i just shared this to give you little intelligence but right now as you sit down many of you your minds are traveling back in your family and you can notice certain patterns that are recurring some of you come from families of priests they are supposed to be pastors but it's either they serve idols or anybody that decides to serve god all kinds of problem will rise until the person gets frustrated with Christianity totally and goes back. That's the reason why you have one uncle many years ago, he was in Christ, but now he's a drunkard. Somebody say curse. And part of the salvation package is that every curse must be broken. That was why Jesus shed his blood. The Bible says he was slain from the foundation of the world. And that's the reason why he could die in time. Now we need to learn how to appropriate the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus. So that that which he paid for can truly be implemented in our lives. And then Revelations chapter 5 verse 9 will become a reality. Who has redeemed us out of every tribe, kindred and tongue. And has made us unto our God kings and priests. That we should rule and reign on the earth. This night we are going to pray. And we are going to make some deliberate confessions of prayer. That any kind of pattern, any kind of curse that must be or have been exhibiting itself in the bloodline that we belong to. And is now becoming an adversity against you stepping into the fullness of your inheritance must be dealt with and you know i told you from the beginning that it is only when you are exposed to teachings like this that sometimes your eyes can be opened to examine a pattern that is our plead i know my family member may be listening to this sermon now but let me give you an example from my life my grandfather was a pastor died 108 years they were the first blacks in Plateau State who worked with the missionaries that established cooking. They were the first ones then. But his father was a native doctor, a priest, in fact, a chief, a chief wizard. As I was told, what the man does is that he's the one that arrests other witch doctors. So if a witch is troubling your family, you come to him. He knows what to do in the night and arrest them. So those witches, they know him. And then in the morning, you see them bringing bag of corn, bag of millet and all that things to bribe him. So he was a custodian. Now his son, my grandfather, became a believer. And the story that was told me was that he, had to, he stayed seven days without food. Praying and separating himself from everything that his father had. But that spirit was still in the bloodline. He gave back to my dad and many of his siblings. And I noticed how the devil fought their Christian lives one after the other. At a point, it looked like only my father was a Christian. I'm talking about people who were born and brought up in a pastor's house. I saw it fight their marriages. 
coming into my generation son of a pastor you will think everything should go down fine then we began to have cousins who will get pregnant out of wedlock and have children why because he wasn't dealt with that's the reason why this kingdom is a kingdom of spiritual intelligence God is not just interested in dealing with the issue but is interested in dealing with it appropriately and this night we are going to pray and every devil that has held on to your background some of you are suffering things that are enforced by these things I'm talking about wherever they are hiding as we pray this night the fire of God will search them out destroy that curse and that yoke in your family and make them experience freedom rise up and let's pray In one minute, open your mouth and just talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord for what you have heard. Say, Father, thank you because you have brought this for my deliverance. You have brought this so that I can be firmly established. You have brought this so that every yoke, every placement of the enemy on my life in my family that has carefully but surely evaded all that I'm supposed to enjoy in Christ you have brought this so that those yokes will be broken so that those burdens will be lifted some of you these are things that fight callings in your family Anyone that tries to rise up in their calling, there is already a pattern that has been initiated that tries and threatens to pull them down. But thank God because tonight is the night of deliverance. Tonight is the night of emancipation. Tonight is the night of freedom. Tonight is the night of exodus. That every devil that has held on to my bloodline by reason of a curse is about to depart. Is about to leave. Is about to, de- to, to flee. The Bible says now is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. Those patterns must break this night. Those yoke must come to an end. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to just walk with me. I'm going to lead us to make some prayers. You are going to repeat after me by way of confession and we'll make some prayers. And then after that, I will pray for us. Is that okay? The system of freedom and salvation has always been around the confession of the mouth. The Bible says that with the confession of our mouth you know or with the mouth confession is made unto salvation death and life lies where in the power of the tongue if a curse was uttered then a blessing can be spoken for to annul it and as you make these confessions i want to i want you to mean it from your heart some of you know the challenges already you can spot them in your family i've seen families where grandmother has leg pain mother has leg pain you are 26 you're already having knee pain that's the same rheumatoid arthritis that is rehearsing itself so that by 46 the same pattern will catch you some is in affliction some poverty gifted anointed but poor but as we confess and make these declarations and as i pray by the blood of jesus christ of nazareth yokes are about to be broken in the name of jesus are we ready Say after me, Heavenly Father, I come in the name of Jesus. 
by the revelation of your word I stand representing myself my ancestors and my descendants my children and unborn children dear heavenly father today I make demands on your mercy and seek forgiveness of any and every sin knowingly or unknowingly whether outside or against the body the sins of my father's house and the sins of my mother's house I ask that today through the blood of Jesus we will find mercy and redemption I forgive every offense against me I forgive now in 60 seconds silently I want you to pray search your heart if there is any offense that has been committed against you that you remember I want you to mention it and forgive the people release the people 60 seconds you do that some of you were abused at an early age some of you were maltreated by family relatives or strangers some of you are still even carrying the grudge 10 years ago 15 years ago 30 years ago if you can mention those cases and release them forgive them unforgiveness opens a door for demons the Bible says, so shall my heavenly father do to you when he shared the parable about the man who was delivered to the tormentors. In Jesus' name. Say, I forgive my ancestors for any known curse brought upon my bloodline by their acts of disobedience ignorance or idolatry father I thank you for the sacrifice of your son Jesus Christ I thank you for providing redemption through the blood I thank you for the covenant through his blood which is new and everlasting therefore in the name of Jesus I rebuke break denounce and lose myself from every evil curse spells charms bewitchment acts of witchcraft idolatry and sorcery that have been placed upon me or my family line I cancel every evil covenant spoken written or enacted by blood that was covenanted to my disadvantage let's take that place again I cancel every evil covenant spoken written or enacted by blood that was covenanted to my disadvantage in my ignorance I cancel by the blood of Jesus Christ I take authority against evil spirits connected or related to my bloodline and I command them to leave me now to leave me now 
to leave me now. Father, thank you for setting me free. In Jesus' name, I am free. I am free. I am free. Do you believe that? Pray for one minute. I'm about to pray for you now. I'm about to pray. Lift your voice and I know. There is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither any definition against Israel. Speak the word and it shall not stand. Take counsel and it shall come to naught. For our God is with us. In Jesus' name. I want you to just allow me to pray now. I'm going to pray and try my best by the Holy Spirit to mention some of those curses. And ask the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus to break them. Now I want you to do this for me. You are going to close your eyes. Put your right hand on your chest. Make sure you are not looking around. Don't wait until I mention your problem. Just open your heart to receive. Because some of you may not be aware that some of the problems mentioned are already taking effect in your life. As much as you can, try to maintain stillness. I'm going to pray now. Thank you, Father. Just stay on your minor chord. Stay on your line and make, make it full. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus and make a demand for the anointing. And I ask, Lord, that as I release these utterances, let your power descend upon your people, descend upon their lives, descend upon their families. And every hiding place of the enemy in form of a problem, a curse, whatever has been orchestrated by darkness, using the orchestration of stronghold, curses, let it come under divine judgment. I pray that in the name of Jesus, your fire will set free anyone that is captive, anyone that is held under any curse, any form of enslavement, let patterns be corrected. Let spirits that exist in bloodlines be casted out today. I declare this in the name of your holy child Jesus. And I ask that there will be the activity of angels in this hall. In the name of Jesus. Now allow me to pray. Don't say amen. Just close your eyes. Put your right hand on your chest. I take authority against fear. I come against the spirit of fear in every family and any individual. Fear that causes intimidation. 
fear of the unknown fear of heights fear of water fear of failure fear of any kind fear of being abused fear of being laughed at fear of being mocked any form of fear existing in your in your people in their bloodlines in their families i take authority against those spirits right now and in the name of yeshua hamashiach who died and rose again i challenge those spirits and i command you to live now i command you to live now i command you to go from their life now in the name of jesus i come against the spirit of rejection i come against the spirit of rejection whether rejection from your family rejection from loved ones rejection from those you are attracted to rejection from from whoever that has told and played in your life i come against those spirit right now and i command you to leave god's people alone be gone from their lives i bind you with chains of iron i bind you with fetters and i command you to leave i command the fire of god to chase you right now out of their lives out of their minds out of their destinies in the name of jesus i'm still praying i come against the spirit of loss and sexual immorality i come against the spirit of homosexuality i come against the spirit of lesbianism i come against the spirit of gay i come against the spirit of of of, of, of all kinds of sexual immorality i come against the spirit that makes a man to be attracted to a man the spirit that makes a woman attracted to a woman i come against every evil form of sexual immorality i come against spirits of lust i come against spirits of sexual abuse i come against spirits of rape i come against spirits of every kind of lust and sexual immorality that is in the bloodline whether from the past generations to the third and fourth generations i bind you in the name of jesus i declare that your time is up and I command you to leave God's people again. Leave God's people alone. Leave God's people alone. I command you to depart from their lives. Depart from their minds. Depart from their destinies. In the name of Jesus. I come against spirits of delay. I come against spirits of retrogression. Of stagnation. Spirits of delay. Spirit of no progress. Spirit of taking one step forward and two steps backward spirit of rising and falling i come against spirits that will allow you to start but not to finish i come against the spirit that fights projects that you can start but you'll never complete it i come against spirit that does not even allow you to start i come against those spirits that have existed in the bloodline all forms of delay delay in academics delay in business delay in finances delay in ministry delay in marriage Delay in relationships, the delay of any form. I come against the spirit right now and I command the fire of the Holy Ghost right now to burn all across this hall. I command the spirit to let go of God's people now in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirits of lack and poverty. Just allow me, I'm still praying. I come against the spirit of lack and poverty to scatter everything you try to gather eyes closed I'm still praying I come against the curse of poverty that has existed in your bloodlines in your generations unborn and in your ancestors the spirit that allows you to toil but never gather at all the spirit that steals your seed the spirit that consumes your harvest, the spirit that devours your finances, the spirit that devours, that allows you to have but not to hold, the spirit that allows you to receive but never to keep. I bind those spirits right now, whether they are in the bloodline or as a result of a curse that was spoken against you or your ancestors. I command those spirits to go now in the name of Jesus. I come against the spirit of homelessness and rejection. That spirit of wandering, the spirit that allows you to entertain the wandering mindset that you will never have a home of your own. You will never be accepted in a home 
or nobody in your family will ever keep a house first born divorce second born separated i come against spirit of homelessness and i command you to leave god's people alone i break your grip from their bloodline in the name of jesus i come against the spirit of the wanderer that you are never settled moving from one place to another moving from one region to another never established never settled i break that spirit from your life in the name of jesus i come against the spirit of witchcraft and sorcery i come against the spirit of all kinds of witchcraft whether witchcraft by night or by day i come against the spirit of witchcraft whether by the projection of arrows or by consulting familiar spirits whether by consulting demon spirits or by necromancy i come against the spirit of witchcraft that was brought in by idolatry i come against the spirit of witchcraft that was carefully brought in by marine spirits i come against the oppression of marine spirits in families spirits in the bloodline that declares that except you serve me i will not let you go i come against the spirit of pharaoh i come against the spirit of wizardry i come against the spirit of magic that makes people susceptible to magic and witchcraft rather than believing and following god i break those powers right now in the name of jesus i come against the spirit of idolatry and false religion the same spirit that causes backsliding that enslaves generations in a family to serve idols the spirit of your grandparents your great grandparents that was brought in by idolatry i break their power right now and i command them to let loose now in the name of jesus i come against the spirit that fights success that you will never rise you will never achieve anything i come against those spirit in the bloodline whether in their father's house or in their mother's house i break your hold right now devil i command you to let them go i command you to let them go come out of their lives come out of their families come out of their destinies in the name of jesus i come against the spirit that fights men from being established in their callings or in their ministries or in their assignments or purpose and in the name of jesus i command those spirits to depart i annul every covenant that was made whether spoken or written or made by blood that is trailing anyone in this place every covenant that has existed in the bloodline that has not been broken that has been that has held sway i appear in the spirit and in the name of jesus i declare and i present the receipt of your redemption which is the blood of jesus and i stand upon that altar by the blood of the lamb the blood of the everlasting covenant i am not those covenants i am not those writings whether it was done by midnight or by midday i i declare that those covenants are annulled in the name of jesus i'm still praying i come against spirits that are termed as spiritual husbands or spiritual wives wicked spirits from the pit of hell attached to people attached to you in your dreams that spirit that comes and makes love to you and tries to sabotage everything that god is doing those spirits that masquerade as feminine or masculine whether you are a man or a woman i come against those spirit i present the blood of jesus and i divorce them from your life if it was an inherited problem if it was an inherited reproach i come through the bloodline and in the name of jesus i exempt you right now i exempt your father's house i exempt your mother's house and i declare your freedom right now i command those spirits to let you go i break your powers i break your altars i break your legal hold of connection and i command you to live their lives in the name of jesus finally i'll pray and i'll ask us to do something and that'll be all i 
come against every spirit that has enslaved men and women in families represented here or online spirit of ancestry spirit that bring and sponsor demonic strongholds in form of mindset in the name of Jesus I break their altars I break their altars and I stand as a priest over your life I declare that that altar that was raised to service those spirits I command it to lose its power and in the name of Jesus I bring you to the cross and I declare that the power of the cross which is in the blood of Jesus sets you free right now sets you free right now in the name of Jesus now I'm going to ask you to shout Jesus seven times and after that we are going to be done father as they make this shout everything that is not of God that was attached to their lives let it come under the fire of the Holy Ghost everyone that has been enslaved or a captive of the enemy whether knowingly or unknowingly as they make this shout like the shout of Jericho let the walls of those demons crumble in their life let those strongholds be broken I declare massive deliverance right now I declare yokes to be broken I declare burdens to be lifted and I declare freedom and emancipation to your people in the name of Jesus are you ready to shout number one shout Jesus number two shout Jesus number three shout it again let them go now let them go Number four, shout Jesus. Five, shout it again. These last two shouts, if there are people who come under the anointing, please just help them. But these shouts, I sense that God wants to break strongholds what you call family afflictions i literally see like a dark cloud like smoke that is living escaping the roof of this house those devils are coming under judgment by the power of god father as they make these last two shouts let every yoke be destroyed let every demon spirit in the bloodline be casted off their lives let there be separation by fire from any entanglement of darkness in the name of Jesus. Number six, shout Jesus. Now number seven, shout Jesus. I break those chains. I break those chains. I break those chains now. I break those yokes now. I break those yokes now. I break every form of oppression. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. Spirit of ancestors, help them. Spirit of ancestors. Spirit in the bloodline. I command your yokes to be broken now. I challenge you and I command you depart from your lives. Depart from your lives. Depart from your lives. In the name of Jesus. I want to pray this and we'll be done. Anyone here who is being manipulated by an attack that was orchestrated from your dream, I want to pray. In the name of Jesus, I count to seven, Father. Place an anointing on that, on that seventh count. Let every demon, every attack projected into the life of your people by dreams, 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 dreams. No matter how long or how short that captivity has stayed, as I count to seven, Father, let there be massive deliverance.
by the power in the name of Jesus. One, two, three, four, five. I break those chains. I command a separation right now. I command a separation by fire. Six, and now seven. Let them go now. Let them go. Let them go. I reverse those arrows. I reverse those arrows. I break that yoke. I command that spirit to go. Go, 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 go. Go by the fire of the Holy Ghost. I'm seeing a lady holding her head. Holding her head. You usually have headaches. These headaches, you may have been taking drugs. It comes and it will go. But God is showing me that it is orchestrated by His Spirit. Father, I count to three in the name of Jesus. Whoever they are, from the front to the back or online, let your power locate those people. Let those demons leave them now. And let that affliction come to an end right now. One, two, three. Touch. 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 I'm seeing something that looks like a snake. A snake. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. This last prayer and I'm done. Lord, if there is anyone here manipulated by a spirit of idolatry, that serpental spirit, whether from their father's house or their mother's house, trailing them from the origin of their roots, from their origin, the, the place of their origin where they were born, in the name of Jesus, I appear in those places now in the spirit. And I call for the sword of the Lord's vengeance. Ushers, you'll have to help me because I see some people coming under intense anointing now. I appear before that body of water and let the sword of God's judgment divide that serpent into two now. Divide that serpent into two now. I cut off that serpent. Help them. I cut off that serpent. I cut off that serpent now. I cut off that serpent now. And I command the fire of the Holy Ghost to reach into the place of their origin. Reach into the place of their birth. Reach into the place where they were born. And in the name of Jesus, every demonic enchantment, everything that was concocted and used as a, as a weapon of manipulating your destiny, let the fire of God consume it now. 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 I declare fire. 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 Loose. Can I have a handkerchief? Is there any handkerchief here? Give me. Thank you, Father. There's somebody, there's a young man here. I see a spirit standing before you. And this spirit is responsible for devouring finances in your family. And there's a pattern in your family and in your life that you have money, but you will not know what you used it to do. And I see the spirit standing by your left hand. And in the spirit realm, as I look, I see your left hand having holes inside of it. So that as you gather and end, there is a passageway by which everything you earn is stolen from you in the realm of the spirit. And so whatever you earn becomes nothing or nothing to write home about. In the name of Jesus, eyes closed everywhere. Father, whoever that man is, whoever they are here, yeah, let your power locate them at the count of three. Let that demon live their life now. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost separate you from that spirit. 
and let there be deliverance now. Help them. One, two, eyes closed. Fire now, fire now, separate. Let that chain be burnt off. Let that devouring spirit let you go. And now three. Touch in the name of Jesus. Touch in the name of Jesus. Touch in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. I am serving a living God. His name is Jesus Christ. Wave your hands to him. He died and rose and gave me victory. I have been. This role, just lift your hands. Um, I just saw fire go through this role. Lord, if there is anyone that must experience deliverance at the count of three, just help them if you can. Let it happen by your fire now. All across this room, from the front to the back. One, two, three. In the name of Jesus. Just help them. Make sure they don't enjoy Some of you this night when you go to sleep some of you will have dreams and that's where the battle will be over amen some of you may even have to come and share your testimonies next week because of what god has done there's somebody i'm seeing here now i don't know but i'm seeing a house it looks like a story building in your village it looks like a family project or whatever it is and it has been there for a long time i don't know where this house is but it's like a story building and it has been incomplete and this project has been for a long time now i saw in the spirit a serpent wrapped around that building and that's the reason why everything done there is delayed but as we prayed and we sang now i saw a fire from heaven that consumed that serpent and the lord said i should declare that within seven months that building will be completed in the name of jesus Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 